Greetings, everybody. Happy Sabbath day. This is July 2nd, 2022. This is a continuation of Judah's Scepter and Joseph's Birthright by author J.H. Allen. This is chapter two of part two. The name of this title is Jeremiah's Call and Commission. And um, I'm Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life in this dark times that we live in. Boy, I'll tell you what, uh, growing up as a kid in the 60s and becoming a teen in the 70s, uh, I cannot believe the changes that I've seen in this country. Cannot believe it. So, learned a new world, word today. Acculturation. Um, where the uh, Dr. Ziegler Guess what kind of a name that is? Yeah, it's part of the tribe, one of, a common tribe name. He was uh, head of the Loudoun County School Board. That's in Tennessee. If I remember correctly, that's near not that's in Knoxville. Supposedly the Bible Belt. You know, of course they teach that people like Dr. Ziegler are the Cho Sin ones yeah with the emphasis on sin and um he said something about acculturation which is the changing of a culture from one culture to another so from a christian culture to a non-christian heathen culture would uh, be an, uh, an applicable definition so which is what they're working on so with that in mind, let's read chapter two of part two of Judah Scepter and Joseph's Birthright. And boy, the censorship is getting really bad. I, I did a video um, five years ago about internet censorship is coming. I guess I was ahead of my time. Jeremiah's call and commission. Um, just a little note here. Jeremiah is a really depressing book, in my opinion, in some ways. It is a totally neglected book, being it's part of the Old Testament. It's considered one of the major prophets, Be not major as in importance, although it is majorly important, in my opinion, but rather it's called a major port, uh, prophet because of the size of the book, as opposed to the minor prophets, which like Obadiah and uh, Jonah, uh, Habakkuk, Amos, Zephaniah, Zechariah, some of those minor prophet books are one page. So I think, I forget, eh, Hosea. So, all right, let's get reading on this. And my apologies, I, I had, like I say, I, I had to go back to work full time. This is a demanding job. And, uh, you know, I'm working like eight, eight and a half hours a day. Uh, the drive to and from is taking me from 45 minutes to an hour to an hour and a half to get home. So I guess it's like a 10-hour day. Traffic is horrible. But it pays okay. And, uh, you know, like I say, appreciate everybody that's uh, um, helped me out in the past. But you know what? That's why I'm working now because... Like me, everybody is struggling. Unless, of course, you own a bank, which I don't. 
My sister's husband's father owned a bank. Oh, yeah. So. But that was a long time ago. All right. Jeremiah's call and commission. Oh, and by the way, Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet. <laughs> yeah, Jeremiah was a weeping prophet because he weeped over the destruction of Jerusalem, taken into captivity by the Babylonians, King Nebuchadnezzar. You could read about that with uh, the book of Daniel, about the uh, some of the history of the captivity may not know it, but King Nebuchadnezzar actually wrote under the direction of the Holy Spirit uh, chapter 4 of the book of Daniel. Yeah. God humbled him and showed him a lesson. And I honestly think Nebuchadnezzar is going to be in the kingdom. My opinion. I mean, you know. Uh, another thing is... Uh, Daniel was in captivity for 70 years. He must have been a very, very young ki uh, person, kid, whatever, when he went into captivity. And by the time the 70 years expired and the Medes and the Persians, which modern day uh, Iran are, yeah, Iran would be uh, modern day Persia. Um, King, uh, what was it, Cyrus, Darius, Darius and Cyrus, they uh, allowed Judah to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild it. And you can read about that in Ezra and in the book of Nehemiah. So, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of history in the Bible, so... Okay, let's get to reading here. Having settled the question concerning the perpetuity of the covenant which God made with David and his sons, uh, by the way, per per perpetuity means perpetual, forever, you know, which God made with David and his sons, together with the fact that he has given as a pledge of their everlastingness, not only the astronomic order of producing day and night, months, years, and seasons, but the very holiness of his character as well. We must now proceed to take up the thread of history which pertains to that scepter, throne, kingdom, and royal seed whose continued existence is balanced over against such weighty considerations as the power, integrity, and immutability of the character and word of God. When dealing with the history of the birthright and its inheritors, the house of Joseph, we had of necessity much to say concerning the history of the scepter and the royal family, its inheritors. Especially was this true when we contrasted that system of feudalism and continual overthrowing of dynasties which prevailed in the kingdom of Israel as compared with the one continuous dynasty and succession of the royal princes of the Davidic, uh, Judah Davidic family, as they mounted the throne of their fathers and held the scepter over the kingdom of Judah. And uh, Bob's note here, you can read about that in the Book of Kings and Chronicles. All right, let's keep reading. In order to have our historic thread complete, we must resume our history of the scepter at the call of Jeremiah the prophet, which occurred at a period prior to the time when the Jews were taken into the Babylonianish captivity, but subsequent to the time when Israel, the birthright kingdom, was taken into captivity by Shalmaneser, king of Assyria. 
and departed into the country of the headwaters of the Euphrates, the country more generally known as Medo-Persia. Bob's note here. Isn't it interesting that Israel was taken into the area of the very people who would conquer Babylon after the 70-year captivity of Judah? Of course, this happened a um, couple hundred years prior to Judah's being taken into captivity. All right, let's keep reading. It is certain that we can never understand the history of this covenant, throne, kingdom, and family, and the fact that they have thus far built up unto all generations, unless we understand the history and accept with unfaltering faith the call and commission of Jeremiah the prophet in relation to those things which God has given his pledge shall endure forever. For if it for if to be taught the distinction between the two houses and to understand the differences between the kingdoms of Israel and Judah may be likened unto the key which unlocks the outer sanctuary of our knowledge and understanding of sacred history, then surely a knowledge of the life and work of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, is the key which the Holy Spirit can use to open the inner sanctuary or holy of holies of our understanding in these manners upon which rest the vindication of God. All right, let's continue here. According to the divine record, there have lived in this world only three men who were sanctified before they were born. The first was the same Jeremiah, who in one of the darkest hours of all of history of the Abrahamic nation, which pertains to them as a whole, was made the custodian of the scepter throne and royal seed of David. The next was John the Baptist, the forerunner and herald of the coming prince of the house of David. Then came the last and greatest of all, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the son of David, that prince of whom the angel declared unto Mary at the time of the Annunciation, the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And that's in the first chapter of Luke 32. Bob's note here. Uh, let's take a side track here. Turn your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 1. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests, of the priests. Uh, so evidently, he is a Levite of uh, the tribe of Levi. There were 12 tribes. Judah was but one tribe. So when the you, you know who's that own the media try to tell you that all 12 tribes are all you know who's. Uh, no, there's 11 tribes besides that. The tribe of Levi were, uh, Moses was of, the, of Levi and he was given the law. He's considered the lawgiver. Well, actually, God's considered, God's the lawgiver, but Moses was the mediator between the Lord and Israel. So you could say he, Moses gave it gave them the law but uh, they were the ones that served the Lord in the temple and the tabernacle they were the ones that did the animal sacrifice and what have you uh, John the Baptist's father was of that tribe Mary who bore Jesus was also of Levi she was a cousin of Elizabeth who was John the Baptist's mother so there's a distinction that is totally lost on uh, 
demon nominational preachers. So, the words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin. Now, remember, Benjamin, portion of Levi, and Judah were in the southern kingdom of Judah and Jerusalem. Verse 2. To whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah. Josiah was a good king. Josiah was a great king. He, uh, there wouldn't have been any uh, pride celebrations with Josiah. Yeah, he got rid of, yeah. To whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the 13th year of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the end of the 11th year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. So they were carried away, captives. Uh, king Nebuchadnezzar broke through the walls of Jerusalem and killed all that opposed him and everybody else he carried away captive. Yep, you guys are going to be my slaves. You're going to till my land. You're going to pick my fruit. You're going to plant my vineyards. You're going to cook my bread. You're going to, yeah, you get the idea. Verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah, saying, Verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Do you realize that God knew Jeremiah before he was even born? Which is one of the reasons why I suspect that we existed in some spiritual form prior to being born. Uh, you know, I mean, that's just my opinion. And if you disagree with me, that's fine. You know, God knows the future from the past, right? So maybe he knew what we would do before we even did it. But we do have what is known as free will. You can choose good. You can choose evil. And what can I tell you? Lord says, choose good that you may live. That's the Bob paraphrase. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Before John uh, Jeremiah was even born, he was sanctified to be a prophet to is, uh, Judah and Israel. All right, let's go to the first chapter of Ju uh, Luke. The book of Luke, New Testament. Uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they deliver them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the, uh, the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. There was in the days of Herod, king of Judah, king of Judea, a certain priest named Zecharias of the course of Abiah and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth. Who was Aaron? Aaron was the brother of Moses. Yeah, he's the one that made the golden calf for the Israelites when they were out in the desert. And uh, so, yeah. And Elizabeth was a cousin of Mary, you know, Mary and Joseph. Yeah, that Mary. Verse 6, And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child. Because that 
Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. They were old, like me, I guess. And it came to pass when uh, that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office. So he was a priest. And no, he wasn't a Catholic priest. No. His lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. I guess you could say that's holy smoke, right? That's a joke. And I'm not trying to be make light of this. But nowadays, uh, guess what um, incense is to the Lord? Ah, what is it? What is it, Chaplain Bob? What is incense to the Lord now? Uh, let's see. What about uh, incense? Well, in Revelation 5, 8, And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, Jesus, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, you know, a good smelling odor, not a bad one, and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. Let's go to Revelation 8, 3. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayer of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. So, no need for uh, somebody to burn incense in the altar, because the prayer of saints is the um, incense. So, uh, let's see. All right, uh, Luke 1, verse 8. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot, his job, his lot, was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. You know, if an angel appeared before me, I'd probably pretty be pretty afraid too. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. The angel named the son. And guess what? An angel named Jesus, Jesus. So when the Yeshua HaMashiach crowd tells you that his name's not Jesus, well, their angel named him also, but it's not an angel from the Lord. It's the angel from the other guy. You know, the guy that got kicked out of heaven. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, those angels named uh, him Yeshua. Thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many, not all, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall neither drink wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. Do you know John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit from the instant he was born? As soon as he came out of his mother's body, And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before them in the spirit and power of Elias. That's the Greek rendering of Elijah. You see, the New Testament was written in Greek, not Hebrew. When people tell you it was written in Hebrew and then translated or mistranslated into Greek, they're liars. And the you-know-whos are behind that. 
And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. John was a forerunner to prepare people for Jesus. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? You know, how's this going to happen? You know, for I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years. Uh, hey, angel, don't you know that me and the wife are old and she, does, she can't have children anymore? She's old. Dude, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, that's kind of the Bob paraphrase thingy. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel. You know, there's only uh, three, I think there's three angels mentioned in the Bible. Gabriel, which uh, Gabriel appeared a couple times. Michael, and then um, the one that they named Lucifer. L-U has reference to light, as in he's an angel of light. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God and am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. Oh yeah, you don't believe me? Well, yeah, you get the idea. All right, let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ, hmm, People that use Yeshua, you see, they're denying your Bible. They're, de they're denying the Greek New Testament. Yeah, totally denying it. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin. Modern Bible versions uh, in the Old Testament. This is a, um, I forget what book it's in. It's in the Minor Prophets, the Old Testament, about a virgin being with child. Um, but they change virgin to young woman alma Ooh, that means a young woman so what does that mean a five-year-old gave birth and by the way that happened a five-year-old gave birth yeah uh was it a miracle uh, i don't think so i think she had help good thing i wasn't the father i'd have found out who that who did that and she would have been a uh a widow, I guess, or, well, whatever. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Emmanuel. How come the Yeshua crowd doesn't use Emmanuel? Emmanuel, God with us. It's in the Old and the New Testament. Both. Why don't they use that instead of Yeshua, which appears nowhere in the Bible. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Yeah, it does appear. It's in, it's called the book of jo uh, Joshua. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, who took over from Moses. But they'll, they'll mispronounce it and call it Yeshua. 
All right, let's go back to Luke chapter 1. Let's skip on down to verse 24. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth, you know, uh, Zacharias, you know, John the Baptist's mother, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me and took away my reproach among men. See, back in those days, not being childless was considered uh, a curse. Nowadays, it's considered a blessing. Hey, you got pregnant? You don't want that child. Go have an abortion. Get rid of it. Verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel, here's Gabriel again, was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. See, Joseph was a direct descendant of King David. Mary was a direct descendant of Aaron, the tribe of Levi. You got a merging of the priest tribe and the king tribe in Christ. Think about it. Yeah. You know, people don't catch these things. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Hey, wait a minute. I got an angel talking to me. You know, and salutation, that's where you get the word uh, salute. And, you know, it's like a greeting. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yeshua HaMashiach. No. Guess what? God's angel named him Jesus. They hate the name Jesus. They absolutely hate and despise the name Jesus. Why don't they use Emmanuel? I'd have no problem with the book, with the name Emmanuel. Old and New Testament. God with us. That's what Jesus was. He was God in the flesh. Yeah. Read 1 Timothy 3.16. God was manifest in the flesh. Justified in the spirit. Seen of angels. Preached unto the Gentiles, received up in the glory. Amen. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou sh and shalt call his name Jesus, before he was even born. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne, the throne of his father David, and he shall reign... You know, ruling and reigning, not water falling from the sky. No. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom shall, there shall be no end. Oh, yeah. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? She She's not questioning him, saying, Oh, don't you know, this is impossible. I, I've never been with a man, so I can't get pregnant. No, she's asking him. Oh, basically she's saying, okay, I I believe you, angel of the Lord, but can you explain to me how this is going to work out? Because, you know, I haven't been with anybody. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold thy cousin Elizabeth. Ah, she's cousins with Elizabeth who is of the tribe of Aaron. Uh, who is of Aaron. And behold thy cousin Elizabeth. She hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. 
And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. I am the Lord's servant. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zechariah and saluted Elizabeth. Listen to this. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe, John the Baptist, the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of my of thy womb. From whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy, and blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary soul said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. And my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaid. For, for behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Blessed Virgin Mary, right? Of course, the Vatican tries to make her uh, a co- she tried, they try to make her equal with Jesus. No, Mary was blessed, but she's not equal with Jesus. 49. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich hath he sent away, sent empty away. He hath holpen his servant Israel in remembrance of his mirth, see, as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed, or children, and to his seed forever. Oh, yeah. You get it now? I hope so. All right, everybody, I got sidetracked there. But I wanted, he, this author mentioned the three uh, people that were uh, filled with the Spirit from the beginning, from before they were even born. Jeremiah, John the Baptist, and of course Christ, which is God the flesh. You know, so um, one of the, I'm, I'm, before I start reading the book again, one of the things that uh, the uh, false religious movements, I guess you could say, is like the New Age. They want you to believe that you can become God, but yet they will deny that God can become man. A big difference there. Um, Satan tried to become God. Uh, didn't work out too well. You know, sorry, that position's already been filled. Um, yeah. All right, so. But, uh, yeah, there's, you know, Jeremiah, John the Baptist, and, G and Christ. And no, it's not Yeshua. Yeshua is, Joshua is the sixth book in the Old Testament. In my King James Bible, anyway, so. All right. The Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Speaking of Christ, that's in Luke 1, 32. When this blessed prince takes his seat, he will be the last king to sit on that throne or, on, or any other on this earth. Period. In the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the 13th year of his reign, while Jeremiah was still a minor, a mere youth, only 17 years of age, he received his call as the prophet unto the nations and was given his commission, the details of which he himself has given in the first chapter of his own prophecies as follow. Then the word of God came unto me saying, Behold, I'm sorry, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee before thou camest forth out of the womb. 
I sanctify thee, and I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I shall command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words into thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to root out, and to pull down, and to destroy, and to build, and to plant. Jeremiah 1, 4 through 10. What does he mean to pull down, destroy, and to plant build and plant hmm now Bob's note here there's a legend that Jeremiah took one of the daughters of the kings two of the daughters the kings of Judah and they went to um, I think it's Ireland one of their names was Tia Tifa and she married the King of Ireland, T-E-A-T-E-P-H-I, two words, T-E-A-T-E-P-H-I. And then the uh, they took, supposedly took the um, stone that Jacob used for a pillow and carried them all to uh, Ireland. From Israel before the Babylonians came in and laid waste to Jerusalem and then supposedly uh, Ireland was overturned and went to Scotland and then from Scotland to England and London uh, did you know that King James was King of Scotland and he became King of England yeah yeah he was King of Scotland I think before he became king of England and he gave us the word of God in English oh yeah and people will you know they'll say oh well you believe the King James Bible is the only Bible that's a cult yeah well go worship your Yeshua HaMashiach make sure you take his mark of the beast of 666 on your forehead you know when, when your Messiah comes because Yeshua is not Jesus I'm absolutely convinced of that absolutely convinced of that what do you want to bet what do you want to bet me and I'm not really a betting man but what do you want to think that uh, the man of sin the son of perdition the beast the Antichrist shows up he's he's going to be called by the you know who's Yeshua oh yeah all right let's Keep reading. Page 166. Top of the page. Called as the prophet of God, the words of the Lord put into his mouth and with the touch of the divine hand and set by the divine one over the nations and over the kingdoms. What? Surely he was not sent over all the nations, neither all the kingdoms of the earth. No. There is nothing about all nations, but simply and definitely the nations and the kingdoms. So far as the word which is translated nations in the text is concerned, it is the same word that is used when the Lord said to Abraham, I have made thee the father of many nations. And when he said to Rebekah, two nations are in thy womb. You know, what two nations were in her womb? Esau, which is Edom, and Jacob, which was Israel. So... Yeah. And when he said to Rebecca, two nations are in thy womb, he now calls Jeremiah a prophet unto the nations, i.e. the two nations, the two kingdoms, the two houses, Israel and Judah, the two families, the inheritors of the birthright and of the scepter. It is to these nations, not to all the nations of the earth, that the Lord sends Jeremiah, his prophet, with a commission to root out, tear down, and destroy. On the one hand, but hear it, he was also divinely commissioned to build and plant Bob's note here 
Um, I was, uh, I had a, a video on Count Vlad, Dracul, they call him Dracula. Uh, there's a lot of things about Dracula. You know, they turn uh, Count Vlad, he was called Count Vlad the Impaler. Uh, his land had been invaded by the hordes of Muslims. Um, matter of fact, the Muslims uh, surrounded Vienna, which was the capital of Austria, which is south of Germany. Well, they also invaded Spain and uh, what have you. And uh, Vlad was from uh, Romania, the province of Transylvania, ha ha ha. So, but they turn Count Dracul into Dracula, a blood drinking vampire. But the truth of the matter is, um, he was a Christian. And you know, when Jesus said, take, you know, the Last Supper, he took the bread and said, this is my body, eat this wine, this is my blood, drink of the new covenant. Yeah, they, they turn that into being a vampire, uh, killing people and drinking their blood. But uh, when Count Vlad, the impaler, caught, captured a Muslim, uh, they would impale him. They would basically stick him on a stick and push the stick through his body and let him hang there. And the Bible says, cursed is he that hangeth on a, on a tree and what what was the pole made of wood you know and uh he would line the highways with these people with these muslims and uh as a warning that if they were captured you know this is what fate uh, would awaited you he was horribly outnumbered and uh but uh they turned this christian man who was fighting for his life and his nation and his people into a vampire. Yeah. And I had a video on that and evidently it's gone. Uh, you know who, um, a T with a oob, uh, deleted it. And I wish I'd have kept a heart, um, uh, the movie copy, but whatever. Boy, they've deleted a lot of my videos. A lot. Um, and I can't keep copies of all the videos. It just, I would need a huge storage capacity. Huge. I mean, just absolutely huge. But I've got the audios, but I don't have uh, videos. So, whatever. All right, so... Let's keep reading the book. Um, all right, so Jeremiah, he was divinely in commissioned to build and plant. The fact that Jeremiah was commissioned to overthrow the commonwealth of Judah, destroy the Davidic kingdom as it then existed among the Jewish people, throw down the throne of David, which was in their midst, and root out that branch of the royal family which occupied the throne at that time. All this is so clear so well known that most if not all of the accepted authorities of christendom proclaim it but those same authorities do not seem to know neither do they proclaim that which follows as a natural sequence i.e that if it was the kingdom scepter throne and seat of david which was to be overthrown then it follows that it is those very same things which must again be planted and builded Hence, we affirm that as God is still holy and did not lie to David, and if he did not sanctify, call, and commission Jeremiah in vain, then the throne of David was again set up, the seed planted, and the kingdom builded before Jeremiah died. Mind you, we do not say that these were planted and builded among the Jews. That was not at all necessary in order to fulfillment. Indeed, we will show you that it was not planted nor builded in Judea, for God gave the kingdom over Israel 
to David forever, even to him and his sons by a covenant of salt. Nine twelfths of the seed of Israel were never, never members of the Jewish kingdom or of Judah. The great wrong of which the standard authorities of Christendom have been guilty is that with a wide open Bible before, before them, they should be in such ignorance, I believe deception, but you know, they're not ignorant, they're deceivers. Um, they should be in such ignorance of the declared purpose of God and have such a hesitating apologetic faithfulness, faithlessness in his covenant promises wherein he has sworn by himself that they are blinded even to the necessity of accounting for the building and planning which God gave Jeremiah to do. The great fault with their whole teaching so far as the outcome of Jeremiah's work is concerned is that they either suffered, implied, or actually taught that the promises of God to David were allowed to go by default. In other words, failure. God's promises to David were ended up in failure if you follow denominational church world theology, of which I do not. So, all right, let's keep reading. And when an honest questioner would arise as of necessity, there must be at once become an, an irresponsible, irregular, unarmored stripling upon whom these regulars in the army of Israel insist on putting the armor of Saul. Saul was the king before David. God got rid of Saul. But the heavy armor of the should-be leader will not fit the bright young head and freer limbs of the little irregular, so he must go forth alone to slay the giant of infidelity, Goliath, whose champion have been defying the armies of the living God. Meanwhile, these regulars stand on the hill of their self-importance and ask, who is this youthful stripling whom we see down in the valley picking up pebbles with which to meet the foe whose challenge has sent dismay among us for lo, these many days. And that, everybody, is the end of chapter 2. It ends on page 168. Uh, am I halfway through the book? And yeah, not, not quite. I hope you're enjoying this series. Um, I read this book, oh, I don't know, 30 some odd years ago and uh, it's nice to read it again so if you want to read a really good book um, read Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan he was uh, thrown into prison by the King of England at the uh, suggestion of the Church of England the Anglican Church if you're in the UK, here in the United States, it's the Episcopal Church. Uh, they're in good standing with the Vatican. Yeah, you, you get the idea. But uh, because he wouldn't take a license to preach. Um, can you imagine that? You got to get permission from the established state church to preach, you know, and you got to pay a fee. You know, can you imagine if Jesus uh, went to Rome to Caesar and said, oh, by the way, I want to preach the gospel. Can I have permission, please? And um, how much is that license? Yeah, you know. You know, that's what a license is. It's permission to do something. You know, a fishing license, a driver's license. You know, the government gives you permission to drive. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, so they threw him in prison for years, and he wrote this book, The Pilgrim's Progress. It's full of symbolism, but boy, I'll tell you what, it's, uh, don't get the abridged version. No, 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 no. Get the original, unabridged version. It, it's a wonderful book. Wonderful book. Um, he, uh, yeah, that man... 
there's a place for him in the kingdom i'm pretty certain so all righty uh let's see what else i think that's about it all right well all blessings praise glory and honor to god the father and his only begotten son jesus who is the christ the lamb of god slain from the foundation of the world in jesus precious name amen